Do you have any tips for someone who's coming into an apartment, maybe a provision apartment? I would say instead of doing that thing where you're like, write a list of all the things you need, go to Ikea or wherever. I mean, they have gorgeous things. I would keep like a list on your phone and then try and go to markets and then buy like little things at a time. I think most of it is investing my time yeah. into finding pieces mm -hmm. that I know yeah, has a bit more longevity. One thing my apartment tour series taught me, it's that you can get great home decor advices through conversations. For the first episode of this series, I went through all of my footages and focused mainly on the people who just moved into their first apartment. Here is a list of their best advices, tips, and gems. See you at the end. We're starting this episode with Pia in her Paris apartment tour. Pia is telling me the story of moving to her current parish and home and the advice she applied to herself. Use what you already have when you first move. Then, with time, you can start adding and replacing your current furniture with store-bought decor, vintage finds, or even designer and investment pieces. This is the sense of the conversation I had when I filmed the Cozy's apartment tour. Most of what makes the decor of this beautiful Parisian home comes from previous apartments and has sometimes even been pulled apart then repurposed. I really like this advice because I think that when we move into an apartment, especially a first apartment, it can feel overwhelming and like we need everything then and there. When Really, it's the contrary. By starting with what we have, we can take stock of what fits the space and what is aligned. This method is also good to avoid impulse purchases. We're back with Pia in her Paris home to talk about buying functional furniture. I'm sure this is not the first time you hear about this, but I like the twist she brought to it. Take Pia's entryway dresser, for instance. She is basically using it as a shoe rack. It is convenient because she can store her shoes and everything that belongs in the entryway but doesn't need to be on display. She used the same logic when decorating her dining room. Remember, this is Pia's first apartment and she only chose to buy and decorate each room progressively. In this space, both the library and the dining table have been chosen with intention. The library is made of wood and from telco. It is used as storage and also to decorate. The table, made of glass and wood, can host friends and family as well as be transformed as a workstation. And now, let's go to Berlin to see what Sarah picked for her first apartment living room decor. In this moment, Sarah was telling me about how her shelving system has been strategically made and placed to store the most thing possible in her living room. Furthermore, as Sarah's home is a 70s colorful and vibrant space, she chose to keep her shelves in a beige color that doesn't attract the eye so much. This is one of my favorite tips and I think it will be very useful when decorating your first home. Across all apartment tour episodes I've made, every person I spoke to used a mix of vintage furniture, upcycled furniture, or vintage designer pieces to decorate their home. Rose is Danish and freshly moved into her Parisian apartment. In her episode, she was retelling me the story of her dining area. The table that you see belonged to her boyfriend's parents and was stored in a barn. When they mentioned it to Rose, she seized the occasion and instantly fell in love. The result is this beautiful vintage table and the wooden chairs she also picked up secondhand. In Brussels, I filmed an apartment tour with Pauline. She almost exclusively used secondhand furniture to decorate her home. Her couch costed about 100 euros and she left it in storage for a whole year before she was able to move into her first home. Pauline also confided that she used it as a starting place to decorate the rest of her living room. The story of the coffee table proved to me how dedicated to her home Pauline was as she drove to Denmark to buy it. 
One of the big advantages of using vintage decor or furniture is that it can often be less expensive than something brand new or from the store. In Pauline's case, I invite you to check out her episode to see how perfecting her search techniques led to her finding gems for very cheap. Last but not least, Pia shared her love for upcycled furniture with her yellow armchair. Something notable about secondhand or upcycled pieces is that you're truly getting a one-of-a-kind item that will keep your home unique, but more on that later. If we are talking about vintage and secondhand furniture, then we have to talk about Sarah and her upcycling. Sarah says she started because she had no money when she first moved into her apartment, but what she could afford was paint. She managed to upcycle beautiful pieces and even created her entire dining room area. Sarah used two old broken chairs as well as a white table she found online. I also wanted to share some of Pia's tips for vintage shopping. The first one is to look for vintage options first when you are in need. The steps allows you to identify what you like and know the model, the era, the colors that you enjoy. Then giving yourself a few months to find the piece you're looking for. You don't have to exclude mainstream stores. Creating a habit to look for vintage first is something that Pia has implemented in her shopping habits. Hopefully you end up buying what you know will be a one of a kind piece of furniture. For instance, to buy her chest drawer, Pia used all of these steps and she was also looking for specific keywords saving them until she found what fit. Intentional decor is quite a vast topic, but it will definitely make your home feel like yours. This is where I wanted to mention the cozy apartment tour. If you look at the book selection, for instance, the books were collected from museums all over the world by Shireen and are on very various topics. Because of the intentionality in picking the books, upon entering the cozy apartment, you already get a sense of what the space is for and who created it. You can feel the love for the diaspora. The same goes for the art that was selected in this Parisian apartment. The cozy team was very intentional with what was put on the walls, the artists that were selected, and as a result, I found myself wanting to look around. I think choosing intentional art is important because of what it can do for a home. It can show who you are, where you're from, and it also once again helps any home feel unique. I also had a similar conversation with Sarah in her Berlin apartment tour. She explained that a lot of the prints she picked for her home are very colorful and mostly illustrated women. She wanted to make sure that her home showcased how important that was for her and she also chose colors that you can find in touches throughout her home as well. I mentioned earlier that approximately 95% of Pauline's home decor is thrifted, which as a result gives her home a very unique feel. Intentional decor can also happen through the different colors that you select for your home. In Pauline's case, the bold blue of her mirror or the colorful prints. For Rose's intentional decor, we have a mix of pieces from her life in London, as well as some vintage pieces that she bought in Paris. Rose really wanted the space to feel like her and her partner, as well as showcase all of their interests. This is why you see a collection of different books, different brands that they love, as well as art 
and ceramics. This space is a mix of minimalism with touches of colors, a good example of what a curated space can look like. For this fifth advice, I wanted to talk about transforming spaces. One of my favorite things about Cozy's apartment tour was seeing how what is virtually a studio could become so many spaces. This can be crucial when moving into your first apartment. It doesn't have to be the biggest space for you to make it work. In the case of Cozy's apartment and Shireen more specifically, she designed the bedroom with an architect and now the bed can be pulled out at night and the space can be transformed into a living room during the day, which is something that we talk about in the apartment tour. This is quite great for small spaces because it gives you a freedom to create the space you need when you need it. And the home really doesn't lose its charm. You can also find different organization ideas on websites such as Pinterest if you want to find something that is tailored to your space. In the case of Pauline's home, I love how she was able to get creative with her space. For instance, the dining room is also the coffee station and was the music room for a time. Pauline's organization of her apartment is vastly different from the person who lived there before. You don't really have to limit yourself or keep what was there before you. Don't be afraid to try new configurations until you find the one that fits you. Number six on this list of advice is one that I've been using ever since I had different people I filmed with give it to me. Building a room around one or two pieces of furniture. This is not necessarily new, but it was nice to see it in practice. In Sarah's Berlin apartment, she wanted this beautiful cognac couch from Formella. Once she got it, it helped curate the space and inspire the rest of the decor. It started with the 70s touches on the wall and with the lamps. But it's also the colors that Sarah chose for this space, as well as the wallpaper that she installed right behind the couch. Basically, choosing a statement couch helped so much that Sarah didn't need much else in the space. When I spoke with Rose, I remember her mentioning that she wasn't so sure about her blue couch. It was one of the pieces that she brought back from her London apartment. Yet, as she had it, she decided to keep it and create her living room around it. She ended up really loving it because of the pop of color that it brought to the space. It draws the eyes in a room which is pretty minimalistic. For the purpose of this video, I will also be talking about two bedrooms that use the same philosophy for different results. The first one is Rose, still in her Paris apartment. She created her bedroom around her bed which is very minimal and simple. The color palette is very soft and the space is made with only what's necessary, no surplus. I think for anyone who is looking to create a bedroom only with what they have or make it as minimal as possible, then this is quite a good example to follow. The same goes with Sarah and her bedroom. She decorated around her bed which, if you remember, her living room couch is from the same brand and the same color. However, to balance and to offset the brown of the bed frame, she decided to go for pinks and oranges as well as a lot of lights in the bedroom. The result is a space that is very vibrant, colorful, and quite like Sarah in this very nice 70s aesthetic. In every apartment I toured, I was amazed to see how much care each and every woman put into their home and their lightings. In Pia's dining room, I learned that what I thought was a very expensive lampshade 
turned out to be a great vintage find that she paid 30 euros for. In Sarah's home, I learned her love for Louis Poulsen lamps. She actually had some in different sizes and in different corners of her home. She also upcycled some lamps that added bright colors to the spaces. Rose's approach to lighting was to bring soft colors into her space. A special shout out to the vintage IKEA lamp on the floor that looks designer. The ceiling lamp is from a French shop and it is a clever way to bring warmth to her minimal living room. In Pauline's Brussels apartment, the lamps are fully a part of the decor. At the time I visited, I remember her mentioning she loved how much it could switch the mood. Same goes for candles. And that's something I can say about all the homes I toured. Well, that is it for today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this video. And thank you to the woman whose apartment I visited. Greetings! My name is Abra and I am a Parisian content creator. I designed the apartment tour series as a space to explore cool homes while talking to the people who create them. I started the series with mostly Parisian apartment tours I filmed with my friends. Since then, I've been able to travel, make London apartment tours, Brooklyn apartment tours. I also filmed in Berlin, New York City, Brussels. Next, in season two of this apartment tour series, is a special episode I filmed in the coziest Parisian apartment. It will be live on my channel on November 16th. This is one of the last three episodes before the end of the season. The Apartment Tour series, season two, now counts eight episodes all available on my YouTube channel at Abra de Grasso. If you'd like to be featured in the series, message me on social media or simply drop me an email. Feel free to also tag below anyone you'd like to see featured. See you all soon. Bye.